Hiking up volcanoes and rappelling down waterfalls, swimming with sharks and running away from bulls, cooking clams and eating flowers. We've had a ton of adventures since we sailed to the Azores Archipelago about six weeks ago, but we've got a baby on the way. And with less than two months to sail over 2,000 nautical miles to Malta, it is definitely time for us to say goodbye to this incredible place and to get a move on towards our next goal. All right, so I am about 22 weeks pregnant, which means I'm gonna pop this baby out in about four and a half months. It feels like four and a half months is a long time, but all of the doctors that we've talked to have said that we should really consider not sailing offshore once Desiree gets into her third trimester and to kind of be stationary for that last portion of the pregnancy. And that's mostly because, well, in the third trimester, she could have a premature birth like at any time, mm -hmm. and there's other medical complications that could arise. So her third trimester is coming up in seven weeks. Mm -hmm. And so that means that we've just got seven weeks to sail all the way to Malta, which is kind of intimidating. Mm. It's intimidating, but at the same time, I feel like it's attainable and I'm excited to finally hunker down in one location mm. where I have one prenatal doctor and if there are any complications, I know exactly how to get to the hospital. I mean, we kind of talked about this quite a few episodes ago, why we want to have the baby in Malta. Pretty much, we started off with the premise that we wanted to find a country that had really good healthcare services. And then we looked at countries that we could get a visa for, that we could stay in that country for you know at least six months. And through that search, Malta was the one country that fit both of those parameters. And one thing that I really liked about Malta is that English is the national language mm -hmm. here. I've learned with my stress levels, uh, when I get sick or I have when to- When you engage with the healthcare system at all. Right. right, I just get a little bit frazzled and it is such a luxury to be able to speak English, so. So we're heading to Malta, 2,000 nautical miles away. That's pretty far. That's actually a very similar distance to our Atlantic crossing. So, I mean, we've got a substantial <laughs> amount of water in front of us to sail and so I mean how are you feeling about that is that making you nervous to do that at this stage in, in the pregnancy um I've been feeling really good I've had a lot of energy I've been eating a ton so as long as I just have food nearby <laughs> I'm pretty good <laughs> and I still feel pretty agile and spry so I think the second trimester for me is has been awesome. Yeah, you haven't felt sick yeah, or nauseous just kind of occasionally and sometimes I'll get more exhausted than I would have otherwise, but I'm just feeling really good, so I'm happy about that. I'm also happy about the fact that we can take small hops along the way, and so I think our longest passage is going to be this one coming up to mainland Portugal. Six to seven days, yeah. So I am a little bit nervous about that passage just because the Atlantic crossing was so hard for me, although I do trust that we've picked a really good weather window. Yeah, I think there's a chance that it might be a lot better. Anyway, so that's it. So we got to get the boat ready for this trip and uh, we'll be sailing out of here in no time. Yeah, let's do it. All right, now on the Atlantic crossing, we had a couple of different things on the boat break, but none of those were totally crucial. And a lot of those things will be good projects while we're in Malta. But one thing that I definitely want to take care of before we set sail is this whisker pole. You may remember that the line that opens this jaw here broke while we were offshore and I haven't had the chance to fix it. So it's a pretty straightforward project. The first thing I'm going to have to do is just take this jaw off. So here's the line that you can see chafed through and it controls the jaw by when you pull it, it opens the jaw and it's spring loaded so it'll close back on its own. So all I gotta do is replace this line and then put it back in and attach everything again. Okay, so that's ready to rock and roll. Now the other major sailing system that kind of malfunctioned on the crossing was the first reefing line that broke. It chafed through at the block. But during the crossing, I found that if we 
didn't bring the reefing line all the way down to the boom, that if we kind of let the reefing points be a little bit high on the boom, that the angle that the line came out of the block didn't chafe. So long story short, I think I've got a workaround for that for the time being. And then we can address the issue completely while we're in Malta, making sure that it won't happen again. So basically all of the main sailing systems are ready to rock and roll. What you got going on, buddy? I decided to cook for this passage as much as I can ahead of time. Last passage was really rough. I got super seasick. So I've got this meat marinating. <laughs> I've got some chicken in the oven. I just pre-made some rice for some, <laughs> rice for some burritos. And then I've got a stew going there. And I'm just basically gonna cook until I can't anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and my plan is to kind of freeze a lot of this stuff so that when we're underway and if it's rough, I can just pull out a frozen bag, put it on the stove and heat it up. This is my sanitation station. Sanitizing. <laughs> and this is already sanitized. Yeah. You about ready to go tomorrow then? Other yeah. than the fact that you're going to cook till you <laughs> drop? Yeah, you know, I'm actually excited about this passage because the Atlantic crossing was difficult for me, but I think the hardest part was cooking. Well, and plus it's just you and I, yeah, so there's a lot less cooking exactly. that needs to happen. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see how we do. Yeah, we took on crew for the trip to Bermuda and then the trip across the Atlantic kind of as a uh, experiment to see, well, now that we can actually take on crew and we have the room for them to sleep and stay on board to see if it would be easier on passages to have crew. And so now we know what it's like to have one additional crew, so three total. We know what it's like to have four total. And this will be cool to see just the two of us if it's easier. Because I can think of a couple things, like we won't have to make water probably during the trip. You know, we'll probably have enough for the two of us for the whole time, just filling up before we leave. We won't have to cook nearly as much. We won't have to do as many dishes. And then it'll be like a lot more space in the boat. So it'll be easier to get around. Obviously the bummer being that we will not get as much sleep. It'll be interesting to see how this goes and compare it to having crew. Yeah, I'm just kind of excited. I know it's not gonna be 15 or 16 days out at sea. So I know I'm just gonna enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. As long as we don't get attacked by killer whales, of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that is a thing. Killer whales are attacking yachts and I'm not making that up. <laughs> it is a thing that has been happening. We can talk about that more later on, but uh, it is going to be one of the challenges of this passage. For now, I'm going to just keep doing little things, getting everything ready, cleaning up, preparing the boat. Desiree's going to cook till she drops and we're going to get ready for tomorrow. All right, let's get serious here. I think it's time that we talk about something that you've been wondering about for a long time, and that is gut health. You know, gut, like, like stomach. Now we've all heard of Montezuma's Revenge, and for good reason. When we're traveling, it's not that uncommon for us to have stomach problems, and we don't always know what it's coming from, whether it be the water, produce, or local cuisine. Now we take a lot of precautions to try to prevent stomach issues, like having multiple filters in our water system and sanitizing our vegetables, but really the best defense for Montezuma's Revenge is just having a really healthy gut. And that's one of the big reasons why I've been drinking AG1 by Athletic Greens. AG1 is full of dairy-free probiotics, which supports gut health, helps enhance nutrient absorption, and strengthens the immune system, which means less time on the toilet and more time out seeing the world. So if you're hoping to avoid Montezuma's Revenge next time you're out traveling, then definitely click on the link in the description below. And if you do, you can get one year's free supply of immune-supporting vitamin D3K2, as well as five travel packs, all for free with your first purchase. And also a big thank you to Athletic Greens for sponsoring this week's video. All right, well, we are pretty much ready to rock and roll and it is about time to say goodbye to Sao Miguel and say goodbye to the Azores, which is definitely a sad thing. I mean, it's definitely up there in one of the coolest places that we've gotten to cruise, the most fun. But I am excited about our weather window because we've got like really, good light winds all the way to Portugal. The trip as a whole should take about seven days. And we've actually been kind of patiently waiting for a weather window like this. Just after the Atlantic crossing, you know, we know that we and the boat can handle strong winds and big waves, but we also know just how much more we enjoy passage making and sailing if the winds are light and if the waves are small. And so we really like waited for a good like two weeks here for this weather window. We're lucky that it popped up the way that it did. And now I'm looking forward to 
hopefully what will potentially be a really pleasant passage. Man, it's funny. We're just getting underway. I'm getting all of our lines stowed. And like, as we're motoring along the shore, we're getting wind coming off of the island. And just a second ago, I swore I smelled brownies or some kind of like pastry. Like there was this pastry shop just making something delicious and I could just totally smell it. And then like 30 seconds later, I got this huge whiff of cows. So like, I'm sure we're passing like a pasture or something. It's just really funny how when the wind comes off of the land like that, you can get some pretty intense smells. All right, buddy, we're sailing. 13 and a half knots of wind right on the beam. This yeah. is literally ideal. Oh my God, good job with the weather window, bud. Oh, <laughs> so far, it. so good. So far, great. Right, my little buddy? My favorite part of the trip has just begun. Yeah. Which is the nuzzle hour. Do you want to try to do the running back, bud? I'll teach you how to do it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. Strap in for some knowledge, All buddy. All right. <laughs> knowledge time. Wrong side. Other side. Other side. side. I'm, just I'm just testing yeah. you. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> okay. Now at the bottom, just create enough slack in the purchase so that you can undo that soft shackle. That's enough slack. Yeah. There you go. Nice. It's a little bit twisted. Yeah, make it so that the exit comes my way. Turn and burn. Turn and burn, buddy. I'm saying use my exceptionally large muscles. Any questions? No, I learned a lot. Good. Thanks, bud. Look what little buddy did as I was trying to teach you uh -huh. how to do this. He just like walked <laughs> over and he's like, yes, we we are doing a lot right now. I say goodbye to land for a couple days. <laughs> Look at him just trying to take it in. I know, he he's is. Like, goodbye. Whew. All right, well, I decided to take half of a tablet of Bonning today to kind of get ahead of my seasickness, which I know is probably gonna come, but Bonnie makes me very, very tired, so I am ready to just pass out, which is fine because we can get started on our six on, six off watch schedule. One of us needs to sleep during the day, so I'm happy to be that person. But before I pass out, I'm gonna put together some food. Oh man, I'm so excited that I did a lot of my prep work yesterday just had this mad day cooking in the galley it's already paying off right now because we're gonna have a delicious fresh lunch and all i have to do is make some guacamole Oso's freaking out. He's like, I don't know what I want to do with it, but I want to get closer. <laughs> he's shaking. He's like, oh, I gotta get that dolphin. <laughs> they say he's shaking. It's okay, buddy. <laughs> there are friends. And I am gonna miss seeing these beautiful mountains every time we go for a sail. Yeah, I now know. Now we're leaving them and I'm so sad. Goodbye, Azores. Ciao, Azores. Ciao. Ciao, Azores. Yeah, it's interesting, the last couple of weeks have been very busy for us. Since we knew we were only in the Azores for so long, we really wanted to cram as much cool activities and stuff as we possibly could into that time, which was great, it was a lot of fun, but because of that, I'm kind of exhausted. And so, in a way, this passage is, you know, it's gonna be uncomfortable, it's gonna, we're not gonna sleep as much as we would if we were ashore. But at the same time, I'm excited to just have a lot of downtime and, and maybe even like catch up on some rest. The guy that designed the Pacific Seacraft 40, Bill Creelock, his motto was you should arrive at your destination after a passage more well rested than when you left. Definitely not the case typically, I think that's a little bit of wishful thinking, but hey, we've got a really like good forecast so that actually might happen for us on this trip. We'll see. All right, 
Alright, well, I had a great nap. I'm back up on watch now. Jordan's down below resting. Man, the wind picked up a lot. It's blowing like 14 knots and it's coming on the nose of the boat, so we're pretty much sailing hard on the wind. But it's getting a little sporty. <laughs> I missed the calm first hour of our trip. body forgot what it's like to be hard on the wind. Everything is more difficult. All right, well, it's getting a little nippy out here, so I'm gonna head down below and grab my sweater. But because we're hard on the wind, I just have to be very careful about going down below because the whole boat is like tilted. Well, I'm just here listening to a book on Audible, and I just saw this bird flying towards the boat, trying to land on the davits, and it finally did. So now I got a little underway buddy back there. The sun came out, and the wind calmed down. It's blowing 13 knots now. It's a little bit off the beam, so we're no longer hard on the wind, which is really nice. Ah, feeling better. Got my little buddy. How you doing, little fur baby? Hello. Coming to the end of our first, it's not even our first day. Yeah. It's just like, what <laughs> so do you call it's like it? It's our first like six hours. So I'm getting ready to head down for my off watch nap until 2 a.m. I'm sleepy because I popped a bonnie. Yeah, for me, I'm not feeling seasick. I'm just feeling really sleepy and tired. I don't know, It's I think it's a combination of the motion and that I'm just like finally relaxing a little bit. I guess I didn't really realize how much motion there was because I was kind of laying down for a lot of my watch. But now that I'm actually trying to sit up and talk to you, that's probably why you're tired, just because motion is like getting, getting back into the motion. Kind of intense, yeah. Well, the issue right now is we've got moderate wind on the beam, but the swell is coming just about right in front of us. But anyway, yeah, beautiful evening. Generally speaking, all is going really good so far. Okay. And Oso approves. Thank you, Nezo. Oh, yeah. He's like, save me. Save me, please. He's like, protect me from the woman. But yeah, I know, women, I know, and they're nuzzling. I know, it's too much. I need nuzzles. He's like, no. I need Never. nuzzles. <laughs> Everybody, I'm going down below. I'm very excited. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get down there, sleepy. Oh, oh, oh. See you in six hours. All right, see you, buddy. <laughs> Well, first eventful happening of the trip. I was down below sleeping and heard some noises up on deck, like a little bit of a banging. Jordan just asked me to come up here with my harness and be on standby because um, he said he's gonna go forward and check on the anchor. Sorry to wake you up, bud. What was it? <sighs> I, I always tie the anchor yeah. to the windlass mm. so that if the chain were to jump the gypsy because of waves hitting the anchor, it won't come out of the boat at all. And I had thought that it was still tied from the Atlantic crossing, but I totally forgot that we anchored that one night in Horta. Mm -hmm. And so I had taken it off and never put it back on. Mm -hmm. So the anchor was like literally dangling. Mm -hmm. And like when waves would hit it, it would impact the hull. Oh my God. So I looked real quick and I didn't see any like 
insane damage. So, I mean, I think we kind of dodged a bullet a little bit. So anyway, there's my lesson. I need to add that to my pre-departure passage checklist. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Well, we had a pretty uneventful night watch. The wind started off fairly strong, but we were sailing kind of hard on the wind, so it was a little bit of a bumpy ride. But eventually the wind started shifting, so it's been coming more and more from our beam or aft of our beam, which has been really nice because I've been able to let out all the sails. And now we're basically on the beam reach. It's going about 16 knots. We're going like seven, seven and a half knots of speed. It is very pleasant right now. The sun is rising. I've got about an hour left on my shift. Feeling pretty good. Breakfast is ready. I'm gonna shove some food in my mouth and pass out for six hours. Yeah, it's a good sandwich, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the nice thing about having two people on board is I only had a provision for enough bread for two people. Whereas if I were gonna make sandwiches every morning for four people on a crossing, I need like a cabinet full of bread. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not to mention like cooking for two people goes a lot faster, cleaning for two people. We can make it if we try, just the two of us. I know, so. Cheers, buddy. All right, well, got a full belly. Time to, whoa. <laughs> Slowly, woo, make my way into my lee cloth and pass out. Unfortunately, Oso is ready to play. Aren't you ready to play? Yes, you are. So Jordan's gonna come down here and play with you, okay? We uh, play tug of war and keep away with Oso when we're under <laughs> underway. <laughs> and so as soon as we wake up in the morning, he's like, let's do this. Oh yeah. Oh, you're so cute. You're yeah. almost irresistible. <laughs> yeah. One of the ways that we deal with a watch schedule is we allow whoever is on watch to like not be actively looking around for 12 minute intervals. So like right now it's my watch and I'm down here playing with Oso trying to get him tired and I've set an alarm on my phone or a timer for 12 minutes and when that's up, I'm gonna go up, do a full horizon scan, check AIS, look at the instruments, see if like the wind speed or direction is changing significantly. And then after I'm done with all those checks, I've got another 12 minutes to do whatever I want. A lot of the times it's just laying down in the cockpit. We'll even let ourselves sleep. And I came up with the 12 minute rule basically because one time I saw a cargo ship as far off on the horizon as you possibly would imagine seeing one. It was like you could just barely see it in the daytime. And they were kind of heading towards us. We were heading towards them. It was, I think like 18 minutes later that they were like kind of next to us. After that experience, I realized that, okay, well, as long as you're doing a full horizon scan every 12 minutes, you're good to go. Not to mention that we've got an AIS alarm that would pick up almost all fast moving boats. Cause out here, any boat that's moving fast is also really big. So I think that all of that makes our watch routine safe and uh, it allows us to kind of like get stuff done, like try to tire out Oso. <laughs> now, something that I've heard a lot of people be concerned about with this sort of a routine is if we're not constantly looking forward in front of the boat how can we guarantee that we're not going to hit any floating objects the big thing that people always bring up is floating containers my main answer to that is first of all i've never seen like a large floating object i've seen some floating objects but nothing big enough that it would like really damage the boat if we hit it the way i look at it it's kind of like well when you're driving a car like what do you do about drunk drivers you can't control that like if you're on a two-lane road and a drunk driver is coming the other way there's zero control like it, if they want to swerve in front of you at the last second, they can, and it's over, right? That's my analogy. It's, yeah, there's nothing that I could do about a container or some kind of a large floating object 
being in front of us while I'm not staring forward. But the risk is low enough that it's acceptable. And what we would have to do to mitigate that risk, meaning like someone all the time, 24 seven staring forward, is just not practical. All right, day two, lunchtime. Getting a little debrief on the watch situation from the bus. I didn't have to move anything. I didn't touch anything. Yeah. Yeah. This is great weather window. <laughs> Desiree just woke me up. She saw a ship on AIS kind of coming towards us from behind us. And so the best thing to do, she said, was for us to fall off more so that it could get by us. But uh, we can't really fall off more without potentially risking a jibe. So we're gonna throw a preventer on. All right, so this is one of the last handful of tasks that Desiree hasn't had a lot of experience with. So she's gonna go give it a go and I'll walk her through it. Yeah, there you go. Whoa, a plane flying really low. All good? Okay. Is he? All right, let me turn the radio on, hold on. Yeah, so that airplane is coming real close to us and so wanted to get the radio loud and see if he's trying to hail us. Ooh, that was crazy. Hope there aren't any orcas out here. <laughs> They're like, get out, save yourself. <laughs> yeah, I've got no idea. That is definitely strange. I've got channel 16 turned all the way up. If they're trying to hail us for whatever reason, they could easily. You think Rooster was in there? Rooster and Mav. <clears throat> Where the hell is this guy? Oh, that's crazy. Guess they're just messing around. All right, well, we've got the preventer set up, and so I was able to fall off a little bit more to get us on a broad reach. Pretty uneventful watch other than that. I am digging the six hour shift. Really nice seas right now. The wind is blowing about 19 knots. We're going about eight knots. Couldn't have asked for a prettier day out here on the water. So far, I'm really, really digging this passage. Mm -hmm. 